Hi everyone, we're live with EdTech Team Online. Thank you for joining us for this Teacher Leader Cohort Hangout on Air. Today we're super excited to be talking about flipped and blended learning with our guest, Mary Ellen West. Just a minute, I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself. But I just want to remind everyone that if you have any questions during the Hangout, please, if you're watching it live with us, please feel free to ask those questions in the YouTube channel. Or remember, we're always tweeting using our hashtag EdTechTeamOnline, so we would love um, to hear from you there. But my name is Dominique Dines. I don't think I said that yet. Um, so I'm excited to be joining you. We also have Tracy Purdy. Um, she's going to be with us in the back channel, just watching for any questions that come through. So um, Mary Ellen, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you're doing in education and where you're at. Sure, absolutely. Um, I'm Mary Ellen West. I live outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I was a high school language arts teacher for about 10 years. Uh, at this point, I work as a local school technology coordinator. So I work with a staff of around 200. We've got uh, around 3,000 students uh, at our high school. And I work with those teachers and with administration to um, pursue innovation in the classroom. And blended learning is a huge part of what we're doing. So flipping and blending is, is right up Right up there with what we're doing. Our whole district um, uses our LMS to make sure that we're continuously blending learning. Uh, we really believe in that blended model, you know, not necessarily being fully online or just brick and mortar, but really having the right blend for individual classes and individual students. So uh, we're excited about what's going on. Yeah, awesome. It sounds like you have like a great chance to experiment a lot of these different um, methods in education and you're working with a lot of different teachers so that's awesome to hear about your experience um, so do you have any specific examples of how you've been able to flip or blend a classroom or see that learning at your school yeah absolutely uh, we have a lot of teachers who are going blended uh, we've had a few uh, completely flip um, for most of our students what tends to work better is really blended so it's sometimes lessons are flipped sometimes they're not uh, we have a lot of sort of station rotation going on, uh, and we believe really highly in students going at their own pace. So we really try to incorporate um, tools that allow for that. Um, I think what really, you know, kind of took, took us off the ground and really got going, we, we've been using a blended model for a number of years, but this year we actually, for the first time, yay, um, instead of having more snow days after the hurricanes that came through kind of used all of our severe weather days up. So when we started getting winter severe weather, uh, we were out of days. And so instead of adding to the end of the school year, we had what we have, what we call digital learning days. So all of our students for the entire district, you know, logged in on those days and every teacher uh, kind of flipped their their learning uh, for that day. Some of them had kids, you know, doing things on paper and pencil and bringing it in or taking pictures in order to submit their work. Um, and others had, you know, other classes, kids were fully online uh, completing their work. So that really, I think, opened the eyes of both teachers and students to the real possibilities. Uh, on those days, I all of a sudden had teachers who weren't really that interested in blended learning before. Uh, emailing me and going, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that it could do this and I could do this. And then it, this frees up all of my time to work with kids that really need me to, to sit there with them. I'm so glad that I had this day where I was kind of forced into it because, mm -hmm. you know, now, now there are just endless possibilities and it's all subject areas, which is really exciting. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love how you mentioned like with those digital learning days that you were able to take advantage of all these tools online. And really, um, like you said, it kind of maybe forced some teachers to take those steps and you know to be brave trying these new tools. But sometimes that's what we need too is a little push to try something. Um, speaking of tools, do you have any specific um, tools that you're using or you've seen used? I know you mentioned with your LMS, do you wanna share a little bit? about what you guys do to blend or flip your classrooms? Absolutely. Um, we have D2L as our LMS, and so uh, we use that as our main platform, But and that has tools embedded. It has a quiz tool and a discussion tool and um, lots of, of really great tools, but we really also like to pull in other tools, right? So, um, you know, we 
I think one thing with blended learning and even flipped learning, so many people um, kind of get stuck in what they feel like can be blended or flipped. Uh, so when students are initially learning, we have a lot of videos, right, for kids, which is great. And it's great that you, know, you can use Edpuzzle and make them interactive, which is amazing. Um, Screencastify is one of my favorites. We had one of our teachers on a blended or on a digital learning day. Uh, she wrote a rap mm -hmm. for her direct instruction and she used uh, Screencastify. And so she recorded, you know, they could see her rapping, but also kind of what presentation she would be doing with her kids if they were live. Uh, and then she challenged her kids to, to reply um, in the same way. And her kids loved it. You know, it was links were all over the place on Twitter and going wild and emails. Um, but we see a lot of blended learning with the learning aspect, right? And we see a lot where students are showing their mastery. So students are creating, which I love. I like having students use Screencastify. I actually prefer that to, to me or teachers using Screencastify. Uh, my last year in the classroom, I had students doing presentations, right? Language arts presentations all the time. And you waste so much class time. And so my students had to screencast their presentations post those and then they picked a few to, to watch and reply to. And I had a student come in and go, Miss West, that took me forever. And I said, <laughs> why? And she went, well, I didn't like the way that I sounded. I didn't sound professional. So then I would delete it and I would start over. And then I, I decided I didn't like the way that I said something. So I would start over. And I realized as we continued to talk by creating a video that was authentic. That was real to her because that's what our kids are used to now, right? My son talks about his favorite YouTuber all the time. Uh, but when they stand in front of the class, that'll be over in a couple of minutes. So they're, they're not too concerned about it. It doesn't feel real. Uh, so I love having students show their mastery in a blended way as well. Uh, but I really think that one thing that kind of gets lost is practice, student practice through blended learning. And there are some really amazing tools where students can get immediate feedback. They don't have to wait for a teacher to grade something. They know immediately. Uh, you know, Google Forms has the feedback feature that's incredible because you can even put links in to send students to something to review if they got it wrong um, or an extension if they got something right. Um, Quiz is is a really cool gamified tool where, again, it's kind of quizzing and practicing, but kids are competing against one another, but they don't all have to be live at the same time. So I know my own children who are nine and 11 love it, but so do our high school students. Um, Quizlet does something like that as well. You know, with Quizlet, you can have Quizlet live, but you can also have kids playing different games in order to practice. Uh, so I think that that practice a lot of times is missed in the blended model. Uh, we feel like they need to either be doing practice as homework and then we go over it when they come in, or if it's a flipped model, then they're doing it right there with the teacher walking around. But so much of that practice part can be done independently. Um, my favorite tool for that is h5p.org. Have you guys heard of h5p? No, I don't know that tool. Please tell awesome. us more. <laughs> so it's awesome. Um, I'm gonna share my screen really fast, so hopefully this will work so that I can show you. Yep, we can see it. Awesome. So with H5P, you can get an embed code or you can send the link to students through Google Classroom or any LMS, um, and you create interactive lessons or activities for students. So here's one that's a memory game. And students would, you know, go through and practice this as many times as they needed to. Um, down at the bottom, they can see, you know, how many cards they've turned and how much time they've spent. Um, and every time it loads, the cards are in a different place. That was just kind of fun, but there are tons of others. You know, for this one, they're dragging words and trying to match. And then if they were done, they can check and see how they did. Um, this one is mark the word, so it's telling them to mark nouns. I'll just mark some words. But they get that immediate feedback without the teacher having to be right there with them. Um, this one is another drag and drops. So they're kind of sorting here. 
And you can make it so that they check when they're done or so that they immediately get feedback as well. Um, you know, this one is a hotspot one. So this one could actually really be for learning. Um, but I love, love, love the idea of students practicing um, kind of at their own pace and being able to, you know, just go and, you know, see, possibly see the solution, keep trying and not having to wonder until the next day uh, whether or not, there we go, whether or not they got things right or understood, um, not having to wait on the teacher to give them feedback, them just being able to, again, go at their own pace. I think that's a key to blended learning is that it really needs to be about the student's pace and every student's different. We know that we've got different kinds of learners and different levels of kids in the same class. Yeah, no, totally. I love seeing that tool. And it looks like, did you create that and then put it on a Google site? I did, I did, yeah. So um, H5P is a uh, coding crowdsource site. So okay. coders, and 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 I'm, I'm very green in coding, um, but coders create sort of the activity types. And then as a teacher, you go in and you kind of create the activity. So you just, put in like the sentences and then what the words are that they would mark. Okay. Or, you know, the definitions and the words, or you can upload images for that drag and drop. So there are all these activity types and then you just load in your content and information. And then you can again, get the link or you can get an embed code. So the link is easy to send through Google Classroom um, or the embed code works wonderfully on Google sites. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's nice that it can be personalized based on the material that the students are needing to review and play with. And then it also, it looks like something that you can use at a multiple like grade levels or at different ages, right? Absolutely, because it's really, it's, it's activities that the coding's already there and then you're just customizing it with the content that you put in. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, there are ones where you can, it's like a presentation they go through and so you can put different kinds of activities all within that same kind of slide presentation. So you have slides going and then they do an activity and then another one, you can have videos. Um, but sometimes even just the simplified, you know, here's some extra practice on this one thing. If you need to keep, if you need to keep working on this, here you go. And again, that automatic feedback is so important. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a great tool. And as we're thinking about the teacher leaders that are taking this course right now, is there something you think the teachers could start doing tomorrow? Let's say, I know we know some are on break right now, but tomorrow, if they, are going into the classroom, how could they start creating some sort of a blended experience for their students? I think it's important, and we hear this a lot, to think big but start small, right? To, to think how you can you know, blend everything and the possibilities for what you can do and have all, you know, all these kids in their own spot doing different things at different times, um, but realizing that, that starting small and taking baby steps, um, every baby step is a success. We try to teach kids that, you know, every small success is a big success and those little baby steps should be celebrated. And the same is true as you move to a blended learning model. So doing something small, like um, having an online discussion, you know, you can do that really quickly, really easily, give it a shot. Um, and, and that can just be done really, really quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that could be the, on video or with students typing, either way, right? Um, there are tools like Recap that you can use where they get to video themselves or um, using chat features, using Hangouts. Um, so there are lots of possibilities, but again, just you know, small baby steps, uh, try one thing and go from there. And then the biggest thing with that is don't be afraid to get messy. You know, we've, we've got to kind of give up control and let things get messy and let kids have a voice and a say, uh, and and just go a little bit at a time. <laughs> well, I think that's great advice for teachers. And throughout this entire cohort, that's what we're encouraging all of these leaders to do is to start small, but to think big. So I love that. Um, Tracy, do we have any questions in the back channel or on Twitter? Well, it's funny that you just um, asked that question, Dominique, because we did have that question come in of what would be one of those first things that I could do in the classroom to get started with flipped and blended learning. Um, any other advice for teachers? There um, are a few people joining us online and then um, with Twitter. 
as well. Um, any advice for any other advice getting started? Um, things to think about when you're building a lesson? I think that one of the biggest things is to make sure that whatever students are doing, it's authentic. You know, kids recognize busy work and busy work online or using tech is still busy work, you know? Um, mm -hmm. it, so it should, it should be kind of personalized, differentiated. Um, every kid doesn't need to do the same thing all the time. And it's got to be authentic and real. If they don't see the relevance in, in the real world, like I was talking about doing uh, presentations in front of the class, I realized after years of having my students do that, that it wasn't very authentic. And so they weren't getting much out of it. Um, but for the most part, just making it technology enhanced doesn't make it authentic. So we have to make sure that that it really is authentic. I mean, like I said, kids recognize busy work. They know if something is there just for them to do it. Um, the number of times I've talked to my own children and they've said, why do I have to do that? I already understand it. I already know it. You know, those sorts of comments are real. So uh, offering choice is huge for that. Uh, allowing students to pick what they want to do, how they want to learn it. Do you want to read an article or do you want to watch a video? Do you want to listen to a podcast recording? Um, allowing choice in how they learn uh, in addition to what they learn at times and then how they show their learning uh, helps you to ensure that things are more authentic for students. So I think that is a huge piece. Um, I also think that figuring out the mix of blended or flipped, um, how that's going to work for you and for your students, that's unique to every classroom. So don't get stuck in a certain model. Don't say, okay, I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip and so I'm gonna make all these videos and every day kids are gonna watch videos at home and then they're gonna come in and, and we're gonna practice in class. Um, that might not be the model that works for your students. And even if it's the model that works for your students this year, it might not be the model that works next year. So having a, a sense of who your students are and what they need uh, do they need stations? Do they need to work in groups? Do they need uh, true, you know, complete flipping or a blend where they're doing some things at home and some things in class? You know, consider what kind of technology they have at home. Are you one to one? Uh, all of those things have to be considered so that you can, you know, recognize what's going to work for you and for your kids. No, well, totally. Yeah, it's definitely personalized. Yeah, that leads also into another question that we have that came in through Twitter. Um, just talking about when you're using the stations in your classroom, how do you help um, the students time their pacing? Do you give them like 20 minutes to complete each one or then use extra time for extensions or challenges? Um, so any, any suggestions on that? Sure, um, it depends on, on what you're doing. Right. And it depends on the students as well. I think that uh, using some sort of timer and there are all kinds of fun ones out there can be really beneficial. Uh, but also that if it's got to be an environment where students know that there's not uh, they're not necessarily going to be held to a, a strict deadline and how long it takes them to learn something. Uh, so if that timer goes off and it's time to rotate, but there are some kids that just aren't there yet. They might not be ready to go to the next thing and that's okay you know so being flexible and willing to to let things again get messy and and kind of go off track is really really important um but having a goal for that time i definitely think is important and you don't want to let kids go oh no no, no I, I i'm not quite done i need i need a couple more minutes and then that becomes you know an hour or <laughs> or whatever else it might be so having some structure to the time you know determining how long you think it might take and that that might be different for different kids or different groups of kids, I think is important. But then also being willing to, to be flexible um, and to, to fall back and punt. Maybe it's going to take two days instead of one to get through what you planned. Um, I think all of that's really, really important. But I would definitely start with some structure, but be flexible. Awesome. That's great feedback for people to get started with stations. Another question. Um, came in, can you give examples of other things students can do at home 
to prepare for the lessons other than watching videos? I love whoever, whoever asked that. I love that you said other than watching videos. If I can say that first, um, kids do get tired of videos. They definitely get tired of videos. Uh, they love video, but, but they'd rather create them than watch them, I think. Um, I definitely think that mixing it up is important. So um, I've had students, you know, go at their own pace through Google Slides um, or create hyperslides. Right. So when students actually instead of just going slide by slide through a presentation, uh, you can put different icons or images or even words on Google Slides that link to different things. Right. It can be to other slides in that presentation or to other tools. Um, but that way, think that, you know, they can just kind of jump around. Right. And so there might be lots of different things that they need to kind of look at and there might be some really short videos included in that but there might also be infographics uh, there might also be a podcast there might be a short article um, there might be an online book that they need to look through or read uh, but creating something where they're learning but they're also interacting you know they're clicking they're moving around and they're getting to have a say especially uh, i think it is really really huge so um, I love that you said besides video because we don't want to have, uh, you know, 30 minute videos for kids to watch all the time. Uh, but definitely podcasts, infographics, images, you know, even just having kids explore an image before they come to class. You think about a history class and exploring an image uh, from, you know, the war that you're studying or the time period and even researching, you know, so, so here's this image. You know, think about it, imagine being there, you know, what, what do you think these people are thinking? Maybe you're going to annotate the image before you come into class, um, or maybe you're going to go and research and figure out what was going on at this time for yourself. I think when, when kids are exploring and interacting and uh, just being a part of the learning, not just being passive uh, receptors of whatever the teacher has to say, that it definitely goes further. No, absolutely. Sorry, I lost my, my button for a minute. Um, no, you've shared so many great ways for teachers to get started using Flipped and Blended, just learning in the classroom and lots of different ideas. So I think that's all the questions we have for today, Mary Ellen. But thank you so much for taking the time to join us and be a part of the teacher leader cohort this morning. And yeah, we just really appreciate it. So if anybody else wants to reach out on Twitter, remember just use the EdTech team online hashtag. We'll also um, send a tweet out with Mary Ellen's hashtag or Mary Ellen's handle so that if you guys want to be in touch with Mary Ellen, you can also, we can um, put some of those resources out there for everybody to see. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We'll see you online soon. Thanks, guys.